Have you ever seen a line chart like this that shows a recurring pattern over time? If so, then you know that it can be really hard to tell at which specific points in time this recurring pattern happens. In this case, it kind of feels hard to tell on what day of the week the dips in the number of lights happen. And the neat chart that can help you with that is a calendar plot. Like the name says, it just visualizes the same data using a calendar format and by the amount of coloring in a different cell, it can be quite obvious on which days of the year there were less flights. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a chart like this with ggplot. And in case you don't know me, my name is Albert Rapp. I am a mathematician and data scientist. And on this channel, I help our users with typical data science tasks like choosing nicer visualizations and how to implement them with ggplot. To create a calendar chart, let us first create a new code chunk where we load the tidyverse and then get the data that we need for the calendar chart. And then we can take a look at our data set. And if we execute this whole code chunk, then we do see the output of our data set. Then we see that each scheduled flight has one row in our data set and we can see on what day the flight left by the columns year, month, day. And if we look at the departure time, then we could even see the time, but we don't need that for our purposes. So let us calculate how many flights were scheduled on a given day. And we can do that by passing our data set to mutate, where we calculate a new date column using the make date function from the Lubridate package, which is part of the tidyverse. And if we look into the documentation of this function, we do see here that it's similar to make date time, but make date has only three arguments, namely year, month, and day. And if we specify these things using the corresponding columns in our data set, then we can easily calculate dates. And if we do that in our case, all we have to do is to map the year column to the year argument. And we do the same thing for month and day. And now we do see here that our data set has a new date column and we can now count this column. And then we do get a count of scheduled flights for each day in the year 2013. So that's a useful data set. Let's save this into new variable. Let's call it date counts. But this data set doesn't contain everything we need because to create our calendar, we also need information like the month that a date corresponds to or the day of the week or the week of the year. And for all of that, we need to do a couple of additional calculations. So let's take our data set and then pass this to mutate and calculate new columns. First, let us calculate a new column that has the day of the month in it. Let's call it day. And we can calculate that information using the mday function from the Lubridate package and using that on the date column. And if we execute this, we see that we do get our days that corresponds to the dates here. Also, we do want to calculate the months and we can do that using the month function also from the Lubridate package. And we can use the date column inside of that. And since we don't want to just get a number, we also have to specify that we want to have labels instead of numbers. And we do want to have the full names instead of the abbreviations. And if we look at this, we see that this year is the German name of the month, but we will need the English label of the month because I do want to make my chart English and not German. So this is why we have to tell this month function that it should use the English local. And for that, we use the local argument and set it to en underscore us dot utf8. And now if we execute this, we do get the English labels here. In case you're wondering, how did we end up with this local here? What's the kind of trick that you need to understand to figure out that this is the correct thing that local needs? Well, you can on your computer try to call sys.getLocal. If you do that, you do see here all kinds of locals. And if you look through the list here, at some point you will see things like LC messages, but there's also something like LC time. And in here, we see that my system local is DE underscore DE, which means Germans as spoken in Germany and not in Switzerland or Austria, and then followed by UTF minus eight, which is something that my operating system Ubuntu uses. On Windows or on your computer, this might look different. So this is why it sure helps to call this function here and then figure out that this seems to be your local and then adjusting this to English that is spoken in the US is only a matter of replacing this 
ve underscore de to en underscore us and that's the whole magic behind it and then you do have the local now to get the day of the week of a specific day we can more or less do the exact same thing but this time we use the w day function and if we execute that we do see here that we do get tuesday wednesday thursday and so on finally the last thing that we need is the week of the year so all of these things here should correspond to the first week of the year this next couple of rows should be corresponding to the second week of the year and so on and to calculate that we unfortunately cannot use something from the lubridate package and instead we have to use something from the stringy package which is also available to you when you have installed the tidyverse it is more or less a larger version of the string r package which helps you with all kinds of text manipulations and from this package you can use the string date time fields function which can take a date as a string or as a date time format and then calculate all kinds of fields related to that day and one of the things that this thing can calculate is the week of the month and now that i say week of the month out loud i do feel like i have said week of the year before but it was just a tiny mistake i meant week of the month because for ggplot we need to know in which week of the month a given date is so that we can put it into the first second third and so on row of the corresponding facet so this is why this particular column is important and now if you execute this you do have all of the data that you need and that's why we can save this into a new data set let's call it date counts with labels and now we have our data to create a nice chart so let's start out with that so let us take our data set and pass it to ggplot where we map as the x aesthetic the workday or the day of the week the one that we've calculated here as the y aesthetic we use five minus week because these numbers here go from one to five and if we want to have the last week at the bottom we need to flip things around so this is why we have five minus week and then we can add a gmt layer on top of that where we map the fill aesthetic to the counts that we have calculated in our column that we've called n and now if we execute this we do see here now that we get a whole bunch of tiles here but right now we cannot make out the specific months because all of the months are plotted on top of each other and to make sure that each month is visible let's add a facet wrap layer on top of that and then use the month variable as a faceting variable and now we see each month individually and now what we could do is to say we want to have only three columns here and now what we can also do is to make sure that each tile is clearly visible by giving it a border and for that let us define a color that we'll also later use for all kinds of labels so let's use gray 30 for that and now we can set our color to gray 30 and that way we see the tiles a little bit better next let us make sure that our tiles are squarish and to make that happen we can make sure that the x and y axis use the same aspect ratio by using chord equal and we can also set expand to false to avoid having a whole lot of white space around the axes and that way we see that the tiles are actually squares now right now the colors isn't particularly nice so let's define a new color and then use that in the scale for the gradient layer to specify that high values should correspond to that color and low colors should correspond to the same color but significantly lighter which we can make sure of by using the lighten function from the color space package and if we execute this we now see that the colors changed i don't think grid lines are particularly useful here so let's remove them by adding a theme void layer on top of that and now we have a whole lot less clutter in our chart and we can use that extra space to add a couple of labels to our chart so let's throw in a title a subtitle let's also label the legend a little bit nicer and also let us throw in the caption and if we do that we do see now that we have the labels inside of our chart now but now that we do have a nicer label for our legend it feels like it takes up too much space so let's move it to the top and we can do that by adding a theme layer on top of that and then using legend position and setting it to top unfortunately the legend doesn't look much better yet so let's tweak it a little bit and to do so let us create a couple of variables that determine the bar width and the bar height of the color bar that we have in our legend we will use these variables to set the width and the height of the bar and the reason why i'm defining a whole bunch of variables here is because i feel like it helps me to make changes later on when i'm not particularly happy 
with some width or height or color or whatever. I won't do this here in this video because I've already chosen these things nicely. But when I was building this chart, it came in handy to have just a bunch of variables that can change the appearance of our chart. So coming back to our legend, what we need to do is to add a guides layer on top of our chart and in there target the fill aesthetic and use the guide, guide color bar layer to change the appearance of our color bar. And in there we can first set the bar width and the bar height. That way we get a nice long bar that is a little bit thin. I feel like this always looks kind of nice. And what we also need to do in this scenario is to move the title on top of the bar. And the final thing that we could do is to set the frame color of the bar to the same color as the one that we're using for the tiles. And that way we do have a border around this color bar. Nice, our calendar chart is starting to take shape, but as you can probably tell, the text don't look particularly nice. So let's change that by throwing a whole bunch of text theme changes into the theme layer. And that way the chart will look much nicer immediately. So let's add a couple more variables that are text related, namely the font family. Here I want to use the Fira Sans font. I want to define a size for the bar labels and I want to define a size for the month labels. And now all I have to do is to go into our theme layer here and throw in a bunch of text related changes. So first up, we change the text argument and set it to element text where we specify the color of all the text and the font family. That way things immediately look a little bit nicer because the font family changed. Also, I want to change the title of the plot. So let's set it to a specific size. And also let's add a little bit of margin on top and below the plot title. Similarly, we can do the exact same thing for the subtitle, just using a couple of different values. And we can repeat that for the caption as well. And we can make the same thing happen for the legend text. That way the numbers became a little bit larger in the bar. We can also make the title larger. And finally, we also need to make sure that the month labels are nicely legible. And for that, we need to target the strip.text argument. And in there, we use the element text as well. And there we specify that everything should be left aligned. And we want to use a different size, the one we specified earlier. And also we do want to add a little bit of margin. Nice, with that, things look much better, wouldn't you say? It's always really surprising how a couple of text changes can make a huge difference on the impression that your chart makes. Now what this chart is still missing is numbers inside of the tiles that tells us which day of the month a given square corresponds to. And for that we have in our data set, if we look at it again, we do have the day column that we calculated. We just need to throw in a GM text layer that puts these numbers into the tiles. So let us equip our plot with a GM text layer where we add the label aesthetic and map it to the day. And if we execute this now, we do see here that our labels are inside of the tiles immediately, but they are way too large and they are right in the middle of our squares. I'd like to move them around a little bit and make them smaller. And for that, I will just define a variable that I call nudge labels. And while we're defining variables, let's also define one for the label size. And then we can start nudging our labels a little bit into the X and Y direction using the same variable. And that way things move to the top right corner. And now what we need to do is to make sure that they use the same color as all the other text and they are smaller and they use a nicer font family. I do feel like we could probably deviate here with the color and set this to black rather than the other light gray colors. And that way the numbers are nicely legible. Anyway, with that, we do have our numbers inside of our calendar. Now the remaining thing that is missing is the labels for the day of the week. Otherwise, it will still be hard to tell which day has a whole lot less scheduled flights than all the other days of the week. And the reason why we can't see that right now is because with theme void, all axis descriptions are gone. So all we have to do is to go into theme and put in the axis description for the X axis back in. And then we have what we need. So let's target the axis.text.x argument and set this to element text. Right now it is an element blank because theme void made that happen. But if we overwrite these changes and make it to element text, then the labels are back in there. And right now these labels are really close to the caption and kind of far away from the actual calendar. So let's change this by changing the margins of the text by setting the top margin to actually something negative to get closer to the top. 
and setting the bottom margin to something positive to, to get in a little bit of extra space for the caption. And we set this to the same unit as all the other units. And that way we do have our labels in there. We could probably make them a little bit smaller. Let's go with size 8. Oh no, that's too small. Let's do size 10. Yep, this looks nicer. And with that, we do see there's a whole lot less flights on Saturdays. But interestingly, you can also see that on July 4th, there's also less flights. This seems to be also related to July 4th holiday in the US, or at least that would be my guess. In any case, with this kind of calendar, it's easier to see patterns or where things might look different. So with that, we have our calendar plot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'm pretty confident that you're going to also enjoy my data visualization class, which you can find following this link here. In that course, I teach you everything you need to know about how to do meaningful data visualization with ggplot. And we have a whole lot of videos that are similar to this one, where I just show you how to create a particular chart type. So if you enjoyed this video, you're going to really like my data visualization course. And if you want to see other ggplot videos for free, you can also check out this playlist here. And now all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching and I will see you next time.